Hi, I'm Daniel Fuller from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about celebrating the wins. So recently we've been talking about God's path for our life, developing in our program the path that he wants us to take and the milestones along that path. And I think a big part of developing this path is making sure that we celebrate the wins along the way. And so we're going to be taking communion today, asking God to, to help us to celebrate the times, the wins, the milestones that are along that path. The way that he intended us to. But we're going to get started with prayer. And then we'll go through our filters for today and we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening. And their families, their friends, everybody connected to us. And all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And that Jesus was smitten for us so that you could fight for us. And I keep asking that you, the father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. And if I ask you to bless us and to make your face shine upon us, let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ. And to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. And help us be sensitive to those opportunities and make the most of them. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes. And do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's go through our filters for today. So these filters are short things that I write at the top of my journal every night. As a way to help me stay in rhythm with God and to filter my decision making, keep things top of mind. I like to start with the big picture vision. For me personally, that's abundant life training centers all over the world. Making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. I programmed the Abundant Life Blueprint that started about 10 years ago. When Proverbs 13, 22 changed the course of my life, it says the good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse inspired me to start creating manuals and lessons and teaching for all the different areas of life. But when I got started, I didn't know where to start. And so I began to seek after God, began to totally immerse myself in the things of God. He began to show up. He began to teach me and he began to train me. He taught me this whole new way to live. We will learn how to walk in the light. As he is in the light. We learn how to do things his way. That wasn't always easy all the time. I had to learn how to walk us out. Went through some struggles. I wavered in this at times. And I just began to document what I was going through. And the things that I was learning. And it turned into a series of books and courses. And now blueprints that we have. Called the Abundant Life Blueprint. And the vision is to build Abundant Life training centers all over the world. That are implementing these blueprints. With thriving communities of people. Working together in unity, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. And then this year in 2022, our filter has been the year of the beautiful land. In the Old Testament, God told the people he's going to give them the best and most beautiful land in the world as their inheritance. And that's symbolic for us of this rich inheritance that we have in Christ. This promised land with all the promises that we have in Christ. And this year, God's been teaching us how to possess those promises, how to walk in them and how to keep them by filling up the basket of praise. 
Imagine two baskets on a balancing scale. On one side, you got a basket full of the issues and the problems that we face. And we could fill that basket up with venting and complaining, pouting. Or we could cast those cares over into the basket. We could turn around. We could start filling up the basket of praise. Praising God for who he is, that he's our healer. He's our provider. He's more than enough. He's the God of all grace, the God of all hope, the God of all comfort, the God of all peace. He's a God of order. He's the Lord Almighty. He's the Lord of the heavenly hosts. Nothing's impossible for him. He's love. He's light. He's the one who makes us righteous and holy and sanctified. We can start praising him for all the promises that we have in Christ. Because for whatever promise we threw into the basket, or for whatever problem we threw in there, he's got a promise for us. If we'll believe it, we'll learn how to rest and trust in it. Keep praising him for it. Even when it looks like it's not true. It's going to help us to walk in those promises and to keep them. And then this month in December of 2022, our filter has been paths beyond tracing out. In Romans chapter 11, it says that God's paths are beyond tracing out. And we've asked this, we've asked God this month to help us to lay out the path for our program, the Abundant Life Blueprint, with the milestones along the way. And then this, this week, as we go around the yearly cycle, our filter has been about change. Think of the yearly cycle like a 360 degree view of God and who he is. And all that he's done for us in Christ. Different times of the year teach us different things about him. And I've found in this time of November and December, it's often a major time of transitions. God's shifting the pieces around. He's repositioning things to move us to the next level. But that requires some change on our part. It requires us to step into a new level of what we're doing. And there might be the tendency to go back to some old ways. And as we move to new levels, we start... Achieving significant milestones in our life. What is a milestone? It's a significant point of development. It's important that we celebrate the wins. And so we're going to be asking God today. Heavenly Father, we're asking for your help. That all along your path, there are victories, there are milestones all along that path. Help us to celebrate the wins the way that you intended us to. And we're asking for your help with that today. But why do we take communion every day? Jesus told us, as often as you do this, remember me. The Apostle Paul says, every time you take communion, you're proclaiming the death of Jesus. And in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation of all the benefits of this new covenant sets in motion everything and so as we take communion today we're believing god's setting this in motion in our life helping us to celebrate the wins the way he intended us to but it's also important we take communion the right way every time we take communion to make sure we examine ourselves first corinthians chapter 11 says so then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the lord Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That's why so many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we're judged in this way by the Lord, we're being disciplined so that we will not finally be condemned with the world. And remember, yesterday we talked about a great reciprocal of the truth. You can take the opposite of this and find great truths. If we take communion the right way, we examine ourselves, judge ourselves. We can be healthy and strong and have long life. So let's take a moment to examine ourselves. First, let's celebrate. What are the ways that I walked in the light today? Over the last 24 hours, what are the ways that you walked in the light? You walked in love. You walked in the truth. Maybe ways you put God's fir God first. Ways you were honest and transparent, present and full of joy. 
walking in love, kind, and patient, and gentle, always assuming the best about people, persevering. You're walking in peace and joy, doing good, doing the right things, self-controlled, full of faith and positivity and belief, even in the face of adversities. You took action and you persevered. Maybe when you missed it or somebody else missed it, you gave yourself or other people grace. Rather than condemning yourself or retaliating at people or giving them the silent treatment. Just take a moment to think back over the last day. What are some of the ways that you did walk in the light? And then we've all got buttons that can get pushed in our life. Emotional buttons. Buttons in our heart. That maybe cause us to lose our position in the light. We've got this secure position in Christ. But sometimes the circumstances of life just push our buttons in a way that causes us to step out of the light, causes us to lose our position. One of the biggest symptoms of that is broken fellowship with God or people. We feel like there's a strain in the relationship. That relationship is lacking peace. It's a signal that we got knocked out of the light somehow. Maybe we're snapping at people or there's stress or frustration. you got all this heaviness and weight and pressure on you. Because in the light, there's everything feels light and free and easy. Maybe we're lacking self-control or we responded in a harsh, angry way, feeling depressed or down. Maybe we're complaining or venting or being ungrateful, toiling away in our mind, rolling the problems over in our mind, magnifying the problems. Maybe we prioritized money and stuff over people. We didn't give ourselves grace when we missed it. We put pressure on other people. We retaliated at them. We gave them the silent treatment. We avoided them. Maybe we focused on lack, not enough time, not enough money, not enough resources, not enough whatever, rather than focusing on the promises of God. Maybe we felt unfulfilled, like something was missing. When in the light, there's fullness in Christ. And so just think back over the last day. What are some of the ways? Let's just examine ourselves. And we're going to bring these areas to God. And we're going to ask him to help us to reprogram our hearts. Because he is greater than our hearts. So that we respond in a beautiful, graceful way from this point on in our lives. Whenever these things come up. And so Heavenly Father, we're going to start with forgiveness. We're just so thankful that we get the opportunity to walk in the light with you. Thank you for all the ways, all the opportunities that we had to do that. And we ask you to forgive us for any ways that we lost our position in the light. Buttons got pushed and we, respond, we responded in something in an ungraceful, unbeautiful way. We forgive ourselves. We take that pressure off ourselves. And if... We need to make a relationship right with somebody else. We're going to take those steps. We're going to humble ourselves and get that peace back in the relationship. And Father, I thank you that what you put within us, what you planted in our hearts is more than enough to help us to handle anything that comes at us in a day in a beautiful, graceful way. And we're asking for your help to grow and to cultivate what you put within us so that we respond to whatever was pushing our buttons in a beautiful, graceful way. We move deeper into the light. Experience your grace and your love and just we grow in the knowledge of you to a greater level. And we think of the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We had all missed it. We'd all turned to our own ways. We'd all gone astray. And God laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserve. And by his stripes we've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by God, smitten by God. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in his sight. All through his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand. And he raised us up together with him. And made us sit together with him. And communion's a celebration of our union with him. Being joined together with him as one. 
And so, Father, I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness and transfers us into the light, into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us, gives us a fresh start in life. We get to walk out this day today in a covenant relationship with God. So, Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take your juice. All right, let's talk about some practical application into our health and fitness, because I believe health and fitness meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. So let's think back over the last year. What are the milestones that you hit along the path in your health and fitness this year? Significant points of growth and development that you've seen. Now let's take a moment to celebrate. Ask God, hey, God, how do you, how do you want me to celebrate this? To bring honor and glory to you. Because you're the source of it all. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.